Well, we occupied the last hour talking about this fiasco in the federal parliament, in the Senate. And the comment by the Green Senator, Lydia, Lydia Thorpe, directed to the New South Wales Liberal Senator, Holly Hughes. And I mentioned while I was on air, uh, Holly Hughes had a discussion uh, with Laura Jays on Sky News, which obviously I couldn't hear because I was on air at the time. And as disgusted as I was about the comment made by Lydia Thorpe, it became even more disgusting with revelations from Holly Hughes in relation to the matter. And Senator Hughes is on the line. Senator, good morning to you. Good morning, Ray. Well, I've knocked around a lot. I've seen a lot of things. Uh, But this is about as low as you can get, lower than a black snake's belly. Um, Yeah. uh, Look, first of all, the debate at the time in the Senate, as I understand it in your discussions with Laura, was about disabilities. Is that correct? So what happened was yesterday in Question Time, Lydia Thorpe uh, conducted a stunt, as she quite often does, uh, mm. screaming about some women that had been uh, had died in custody. But she decided to do the stunt during a response by Linda Reynolds to a question around International Day for People with a Disability, which is tomorrow. Yep. And so obviously there was some uh, engagement from the Chamber that how totally lacking in class that was to perform the stunt during that particular moment of question time. Mm. So fast forward to 7.20-ish last night, there was some debate going on in the House over some bills. Um, there's interjections uh, that occur. I'm happy to acknowledge I participate in those. Uh, and uh, Lydia Thorpe directed one towards me to which I responded, don't you start. You're a disgrace pulling that stunt whilst discussing disability and what we do. Right. And she then turned around and said, well, at least I kept my legs shut. And not only me... <laughs> Every time I say it, I'm still sort of a little bit wind comes out of me. Yeah. Uh, not, it wasn't just me that thought it. Every single one of my colleagues almost that I spoke to yeah. took it to infer, had I kept my legs shut, I would not have an autistic son. <sighs> and that is a new low. Like, bring it on. I don't care what you say to me. But in this place, and we have very vocal and we have vicious debates at times that can be quite heated, we never invoke people's families. You don't bring people's children in. We debate policy and how we think things should be done or who's doing it right or who's doing it wrong. We don't invoke people's families. And it has taken it to a new level. That's been compounded this morning by Tanya Plibersek doing an interview. And when asked about it, she said, well, if it's true... And this is the most high-profile Labor woman doubting whether or not it occurred. Now, I'm sorry, here we are again with this Me Too movement, only for less women. Conservative women, oh, you know, that's probably not true. probably didn't happen. Lydia Thorpe gave an apology in the Senate. It happened. Uh, But, you know... Was it a qualified apology or... or, believe all women. (laughs) She said, I'm happy to retract. I just got a view of something that disturbed me, but I'm happy to retract now. So this is is what she said. Mm. She pointed to the back of the chamber. I was sitting on the front bench, sitting next to Linda Reynolds. Right. So I don't know what she's pointing to the back of the chamber and what she's saying she saw, because I was sitting on the front bench with Linda Reynolds. So it's not an inference that someone um, did something disturbing, or you did something that disturbed her because yeah. she pointed to the back of the chamber, not she the front of the She pointed to the back of the chamber, which you can see, and I was sitting at the front of the chamber next to Linda mm. Reynolds. So, judging by what other senators have said, it's not up for debate that it was said. It was said, and there was a retraction. And and it was heard by uh, crossbenchers who've come up and told me what they heard Mm. and were disgusted, and they got the inference. Uh, I had a Labor senator come up and tell me what was said. He got the inference straight away, and it's actually that senator that said to me, imagine if a Liberal or Labor senator had said that, we'd all be an independent by what now? Like, there'll be, you know, where's the action from the Greens? I haven't even heard from a member of the Greens. Well, you see, Senator, as revolting as it was before I knew about your 11-year-old son with mm. special needs, as revolting oh, as it... he's 12 it, now. He's a big boy, right? Oh, he's dear. Uh, d- please, <laughs> may I firstly apologise. What's <laughs> his first name? He's upset losing a year, Fred. What's, what's, what's his first name? Fred. Fre- Fred, I apologise, yep. champ. 
12 is a big difference to 11. I'm really, yeah. really so- sorry. And you know it's what? A- he's off to high school next year in a mainstream school with sport. Really? He, we were told he would never speak. He's level three autism. And mm. he now ra- he rings me three or four times a night when I'm down here in Canberra. Really? And this week he's, he's decided he's learnt prank calls. So he calls me and says, <laughs> Mum, I'm going to do a prank call on you. Is your fridge <laughs> running? And then he giggles. And I said, what you're supposed to do, Fred, is when I say yes, you say, well, you better go catch it. But he was laughing too much by this. But yeah, <laughs> this is a kid who is never supposed to speak. He is the most amazing child in the world. A forewarning on prank calls. That's a new thing I better remember oh, in, the, in the future. Hilarious. Yeah. But, but um, back to the... Yeah. Now, e- even without reference to Fred, okay, without reference to said, uh, the Fred, mm. if you'd said this to the other senator, mm. your feet would not have touched the ground. No. You would be... I can be, tell you, if I'd have said that, Simon yeah. Birmingham, the leader of the Senate, yeah. would have been next to me in a heartbeat... And dragging me to the PMI. I, 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 I look, would have been I, in with the Prime Minister and I mm. would have, you know, been pulled out. And as I said, mm. you know, almost told my position was untenable. Well, I, I mean, there's, there's levels of insults and there's levels of vitriol, but mm. this passes the extreme this goes, I mean, I've knocked around a lot. I've been in, you know, football dressing rooms. I've been in pubs and clubs all my life. I grew up in either the bush or the western suburbs of Sydney. I've seen a lot of stuff. But I've yeah. never, ever heard the like of this from a parliamentarian in any, in any form. I've never heard anything like this. For a woman like to this. say it to a woman. For a woman to say it to a woman. I, 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 as I said, it takes a bit of the wind out of me every time I think about it. Yeah, well, I can understand that. I can understand it. So we're, we're waiting with bated breath for Adam Bant to actually say something about it. Mm. Mm. Uh, and I'm very disappointed that Tanya Plibersek is starting to say, if it happened, Tanya, if mm. you're listening, it happened. It happened. Mm. And you but need again, to start. here we are. Don't believe conservative women. Try and put doubt on it. Mm. Anyway, um, look, I... I um, like, I'm, I'm just absolutely speechless. I, I just don't understand what level of depravity we're talking about here. I really don't. And, and what level of indecent behaviour we're talking about, because that's what it is, is just depraved and indecent to talk in that fashion uh, to another person, let alone another senator in the House. And mm. I, I might also mention Sarah Hanson Young, who I've had some battles with, well documented over the years. Um, mm. She called out, as she should, David Van for his behaviour earlier this week. Where's mm-hmm. she? Cooey, uh, Sarah. Uh, she Cooey. was sitting next to Lydia. I'm pretty sure. Well, she would have heard it for sure and certain. Where are you, Sarah Hanson Young? Where's your credibility? Anyway, um, Holly, um, it's lovely. Oh, Senator Hughes, I should say more formally, it's lovely Holly, to talk to you. Holly, 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 don't be ridiculous. All right, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Give Fred a, a hug for me and tell him to keep prank calling Mum. Oh, don't. I'm going to give him your number. You'll be in trouble. <laughs> At least I know he's going to warn me about the prank call before yeah, I get he'll it. he'll tell you it's coming. He'll tell you it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Lovely to talk All to you. Right. wish it was in different circumstances. Thanks very much. Absolutely. Thanks, Ray. Bye. Thanks. Ho- Holly Hughes, Liberal Senator for New South Wales. Um, I mean, uh, you heard what she said. Um, when she repeats what was said, it's distressing. And I've got to tell you, it's distressing for me even thinking about it, um, particularly given what she said that she thinks it was about that if she'd kept her legs together, um, and it's not keep my legs together, but kept her legs together, she wouldn't have given birth to a child with special needs. Um, And what Lydia Thorpe needs to do now, um, given she spends her life whinging about other people and complaining about the plight of her Indigenous community, is explain to her constituents and decent-minded Indigenous Australians what she did mean by that slur. What she did mean. And a decent woman like Tanya Plibersek, despite the opposite sides of Parliament, needs to take a bipartisan approach to this and join the chorus of people condemning the Greens, and Lydia Thorpe in particular. And we need an explanation from the leader of the Greens in Canberra, Adam Baird, as well. Whether it'll come, I'm buggered if I know.